give a woman a phrase and she's going to want a visual to go with it. That's how it all started. One weekend during the Easter of 2016, the only thing that popped off the pages of scripture for Julie Storr were the words, so that, and that is where her journey began. Welcome to Lexio the Liturgy, where we unpack the prayers that come from the centuries-old treasury found in the Roman Catholic Church. And now, here's Julie Storr. Thanks for joining me. This week, we Lexio the Liturgy with the Collect for the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. I remember a rule in math that helps you solve the equation by crossing off equal numbers from each side of the equals sign. This is a very simple explanation of the mathematical rule. I think it was called rearranging equations. Rearranging equations is what I did with this prayer. In the first side of the equation, we find the who phrase of the prayer, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true. The word teach is found in the Latin form of the prayer as a series. Interestingly, This translation of teach is defined as to plant. I confess that I had to think on that for a while, but then it made sense. Do you remember a teacher in your life who one day said something that created a spark inside you? Perhaps it was math or history, but there was just a seed that was planted inside you that took root, grew, and bore fruit. Now just imagine that the spark or the seed Inside you is God. When that spark that is God takes root in our hearts, He abides there. When it comes to the spiritual life, often our first definition of the heart is that it is the seat of affection. The heart can also be thought of as our will, and as such, our heart could be considered an altar where we pray and where we choose to sacrifice our will to His. Scripture tells us that the state of our heart is a matter of life and death. With all vigilance, guard your heart, for in it are the sources of life. Proverbs 4.23 We also learn in John 13 verse 2 that it is in the heart where the devil brings temptation. We hear, by the time the supper took place, the devil had already put the idea into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. On the other side of the equation in the prayer, we find a phrase equal to abide in our hearts, and it is a dwelling pleasing to you. The dwelling is our heart, which by the presence of Jesus is made just and true, a dwelling deemed worthy of God. When we cross off those two phrases out of the prayer, we are left with our petition of the prayer that we are fashioned by his grace. In the prayer, the word fashioned is translated from the Latin word existare, which means to exist. In this prayer, we ask God to make us so deeply rely on Him that we exist solely on His grace. What might that look like? You woke up, grace. You put on clothes, grace. You had coffee, grace. If something unexpected or hard comes up, Let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. When we learn that all we have is grace, our heart has no choice to be filled with joy because God dwells in us. Thanks for praying with me. For more information on how to Lexio the Liturgy, or for contact information to reach out to me to speak at your next event, or just to chat, head to my website, LexioTheLiturgy.com.